1.1 analyzing categorical data. Let's start with the first blank here. It's actually just statistics. So statistics is the science of data. All different types of data that we'll look at. Um, another phrase I always like to use, statistics being the study of variation. You probably have um, a pretty good idea of what the word variation means. Um, change or differences uh, in numbers in this case. The next link here, data analysis. That's the process of organizing, displaying, summarizing, and asking questions about data. And then a couple of our first vocab terms here, individuals. So that, that's objects described by the data set. So a lot of times you think of indi individuals as being people, and you know, in statistics a lot of times they are people, but they certainly don't have to be people. So whatever the objects in the data set are, we refer to those as being the individuals. So that does, does not have to be people, the individuals in the data set. Those, those can just be any object or thing. Variable, the next piece here, that's any characteristic we want to observe about the individual. So we have individuals in the data set, and then the variable is some characteristic that we want to look at and consider about those individuals. Okay, so the two big types of data that we're going to look at, um, they can be sorted into either categorical variables or quantitative variables. Categorical variables, that places an individual into a specific category, hence the name there. So that could be like colors or car models, things that, aren't, things that don't have numbers. So th these are the types of data that aren't related to numbers. They're in specific categories or they have a specific kind. And then quantitative variables, they take numerical values. So our definition here, quantitative a quantitative variable takes numerical values for which it makes sense to find an average. So these are the ones that have to do with numbers, quantitative variables. So for example, miles per gallon, you could find an average. Test scores, you could find an average. Quantitative variables are the ones associated with numbers. Categorical variables, uh, they're just put into certain categories based on their type. So the next blank there, something generally takes on many different values, and that's, that's a variable. So if we're looking at uh, hair colors, okay, there's many different hair colors we could consider. We are interested in how often a variable takes on each value. So if it's categorical, how many individuals are in each category. Or if it's quantitative, for example, um, how many different test scores there are, how many people got 100%, how many people got 75%. So they take on um, a lot of different values. We want to know how often each value occurs. The next word there, distribution, that tells us what a variable takes on and how often it takes those values. So a really, uh, I guess, easy example of a distribution is if we have a class test and I wrote out every single student's test score um, in a row, I could see the variable would being the test scores, how often each one occurs, uh, and which test scores were actually in the class. So that would be the distribution for test scores. So let's go ahead and look at the example here about U.S. Census data. It says here is information about 10 randomly selected U.S. residents from the 2000 census. So we see the state that they're from, the number of family members each person had that was selected, the age, gender, marital status, married or not, their total income and their travel time to work. So part A says, who are the individuals in this data set? So the individuals were just the people randomly selected in the survey. So the 10 randomly selected US residents, those would be the individuals included in our data set. So the 10 randomly selected US residents. Uh, 
Which ones? The ones that were included from the 2000 census. And then part B says, what variables are measured? Identify each as categorical or quantitative. And what units were the quantitative variables measured? So if you look at each one of these columns, each one of them actually represents a different variable that was measured about each one of those residents. So let's go ahead and start with the categorical variables here. Remember, these are the ones that it doesn't make sense to take an average. They're just placed into different categories based on their type. So right away, I think that first column, state, that's definitely a categorical variable. Kentucky, Florida, Wisconsin, all the different states that were randomly selected for each resident. Going down the list here, gender, definitely a categorical variable, not associated with numbers. And then marital status, the only other categorical variable, married or not. So for the three categorical variables, we have state, gender, and marital status. So it looks like the remaining ones are actually the quantitative variables, and they all have numbers associated with them. So that should make sense. So the quantitative variables, we have number of family members. Definitely makes sense to, to take an average of those numbers. So that's how you know it's quantitative. It has numbers, and it makes sense to take an average of those numbers. So we have family members, also the age, quantitative. Total income, quantitative. And travel time to work. So those four variables are all quantitative. And then what were the units? What were those quantitative variables measured in? It does make sense to take an average for these variables. So family members, that was just the number of people in your family. Right? Number of people in your family for family members. Age, that's years. How old you are. Income, that's dollars. You should throw a little dollar sign in there for that one. And then travel time to work, uh, that's minutes. I would hope that that's not hours. That would be measured in minutes in this case. And then part C says, describe the individual in the first row. So we actually know quite a bit about this person. Describe the individual in the first row. So if we read across here, uh, this person's from Kentucky. They have two family members. Uh, assuming that's who they live with, by the way. 61-year-old female who's married, has a total income of $21,000, and takes her 20 minutes to get to work. So just from this data set alone here, we have seven total variables that we can read from. We know quite a bit about this person. So she's a 61-year-old married Kentucky resident. We know that for sure. I went ahead and highlighted this first row so we know who we're talking about. With a total income of $21,000, and that's yearly, by the way. She lives 20 minutes from work and has two family members that she lives with. All right, let's move on to how to explore data. So we start with each variable by itself. We start with each variable by itself, and we study the relationships among the variables. So maybe we start to see a trend among Kentucky residents or among married people, but we start with each one individually, each variable by itself, and then we look at the relationships among those variables. Um, and then we like to display it. So we start with the graph or graphs, and we add numerical summaries. As human beings, we're very visual creatures, so it's really important to be able to display our data uh, graphically. And the last two questions here, Q1 and Q2, check your understanding questions. The first one says, what's the difference between categorical and quantitative variables? And I hope you know that by now and are able to explain it uh, for yourself. So quantitative variables, let's start with those. They are numerical only. Categorical variables, notice I just abbreviated here, cat vars. Categorical variables, 
they sort individuals by type or characteristic. So they're, um, it doesn't make sense to take an average of those. They're not numeric in the sense that we don't want to, we don't want to add them up and divide by how many there are. We don't want to take an average. So quantitative, numeric, you could take an average. It would make sense. Category variables sort by type slash characteristic. It doesn't make sense to take an average for the categorical ones, right? We don't want to know what the average hair color is. It really doesn't make sense. And then question two says, do we ever use numbers to describe the values of a categorical variable? Do we ever actually use numbers to describe the values of a categorical variable? Right? We said it doesn't make sense to take an average of a categorical variable, but do we ever use numbers to describe those values? Um, and in fact, we do. So we can use numeric categories, per se. And then let me give you some examples that you can easily relate to. Uh, for example, zip codes. So a zip code, uh, each location has one. They describe the location, but it really wouldn't make sense to add zip codes up and take an average of them. So they're still categorical variables, even though they're represented by numbers. Uh, another one, AP scores. Right? You could fall into a certain category um, that describes you, but maybe we don't need to take an average of those. We just place people in a certain category that's described by numbers. So AP scores is another example. So we can have numeric categories like zip codes or area codes even, um, AP scores, place students into categories. Uh, and then I'm going to underline this one in red here, color code this a little bit. Do we ever divide the distribution of a quantitative variable into categories? So in that one, I'm kind of going back to AP scores here. Can we take a quantitative variable and make it categorical? So yeah, we certainly can. So my note here in red, we can transform quantitative into categorical, quantitative being ones with numbers. So I could find the average AP score for my class. In fact, I do every year. That's a quantitative variable. Or I could look at it categorically just by looking at the students that got fives, fours, threes, twos, or ones. So we can go from, cat from quantitative to categorical, but we actually can't go the other way. So we can't make categorical into quantitative. Again, we can't find the average car color of all the cars in the parking lot. There's no way to add up red, blue, and divide by two. It just doesn't make sense. So we can go from quantitative to categorical. We can make those numbers actual categories, but we can't make categorical into quantitative. That just doesn't make sense. So quantitative to categorical, that's good. That gets a green arrow. Categorical, categorical to quantitative, no, that gets a red crossed out arrow. Can't do that. Sorry, little sad face there. So quick summary, we talked about individuals being in a data set and then what a distribution looks like, whether it's categorical or quantitative. Remember, ca uh, quantitative variables, quantities, those are the ones that speak to the numbers where it makes sense to take an average. The categorical ones those are just the ones in specific set categories. doesn't make sense to take an average of those. So you can always go back to that if you can't figure out which one a variable is in. All right, that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.